Thank you. Can everyone see my slides? Great. Hello, everyone. My name is Golnush Kamali. I'll be presenting on behalf of Surgeon MR, using mixed reality to make surgery safer. Let's play a game, shall we? A classic party game, pin the tail on the donkey. The premise, you're given a tail and a picture of a donkey. You're supposed to pin the tail where you think it belongs. The catch though, you can't see because you're blindfolded. So we're gonna to try to reenact this game on Zoom. If you'll please humor me, cover your eyes and take your mouse and try to point it over where you think the tail would belong on the donkey. Okay, now let's reveal how we did. Probably got some pretty funny spots, right? I, for example, gave poor Eeyore a nose tail. That's hilarious. But now picture this instead. Instead of a party, it's the ICU. Instead of a tail, it's a catheter. Instead of a picture of a donkey, it's your skull. Not so funny anymore. Would you trust this method? Yeah, this is exactly how some bedside procedures have been performed for over a hundred years where surgeons are relying on their mind's eye to estimate the internal position of targets in your body. But with today's technology, surgeons don't have to guess anymore. One such blind bedside procedure is external ventricle drain, or EVDs. It's a common neurosurgery procedure used to treat increased pressure inside the skull. It's done by placing a catheter in the fluid space at the center of the brain to help relieve pressure. EVDs, also known as ventriculostomy, perform what's known the traditional way, freehand a way that involves using a tape measure and a clinician marking on your skull with a pen, a way that hasn't changed in over a century. For this procedure, it misses the mark a third of the time, leading to bleeding, infection, and injuries. These multiple repositionings increase infection rates, result to, resulting in increased procedures, which result in procedural costs anywhere from 25 to $62,000 that are incurred by the patient and the hospital not to mention the potential malpractice claims and loss in trust of the institution and the providers. But that's where Surgeon MR can help. We are a platform technology aiming to make the invisible visible. Using mixed reality, Surgeon MR can help neurosurgeons improve the accuracy of the catheter position by providing visual guidance in an otherwise blind situation. Use augmented reality goggles to overlay the CAT scan and target directly in the patient's anatomy, providing visual guidance to the surgeon surgeon, which allows tube insertion on the correct path. In the NSF I-Corps and Hexite program, we have interviewed over 30 neurosurgeons who have time and time again lamented the way that EVDs are currently performed, citing catheter misplacement as the biggest concern. As one neurosurgeon put it best, after seeing all those multiple traces in the brain from multiple repositionings, for a family member, he would never perform EVDs without navigation, and yet that's the current standard of care going in blindly. That's why a need for a technology like ours is paramount. But how does it work? Well, in this video, we can see it from two different perspectives. One is from the clinician who's actually wearing the head-mounted display goggles, and the other is from a um, person just watching the outsider from a surgeon. It's, a, it's the end picture on the bottom left. Our software is projected on the patient anatomy, and the clinician uses a point tool to touch the three markers for point of reference and registers and confirms alignment using voice commands. Once the clinician has confirmed the CT scan registration and planning and created their hole, a virtual line, which is that red line you see there, passes through the hole and the target, from which the surgeon aligns their catheter with the virtual line for improved insertion accuracy. But how do we integrate with the current workflow? Well, right now, when a patient has EVD, they come in with head trauma, a CT scan is acquired, and then the clinician plans based on the CT scan. And by planning, we mean they use a surgical tape and then mark on the skull with a pen. Then they perform the catheter insertion and miss. They now must reposition and reinsert the catheter, which opens the door for injuries and infections, and potentially miss again. But with surgeon MR, there are no more misses. And we do so by seamlessly integrating into the current workflow. We add markers to the patient before acquiring the CT, which is then uploaded to our platform from which we do segmentation and planning of the target. No more tape measures, which is then uploaded to our head-mounted display. From here, this takes all about 10 minutes or less. Then from here, the surgeon registers the patient anatomy and does a procedure resulting in successful insertion the first time around. Our preliminary studies have shown over 35% improvement in placement accuracy, as well as a high ranking usability score. 
Improved accuracy means fewer complications resulting in shorter hospitalization stays. Shorter hospitalization stays means happier, healthier patients. Improved accuracy means fewer corrective procedures resulting in lower procedural costs, translating to a savings of average $30 million. Our business model is based on installation and subscription revenue model, consisting of a one-time installation fee and a recurring yearly software subscription. We also have consumables that are procedure dependent. So for example, for EVDs, that would be single use sterile catheter kits for each procedure. Considering large or teaching hospitals as our main serviceable market and penetrating about 20% of that market, we expect to generate $18 million in sales and $9 million in subscription fees and consumables. Our platform technology has a lot to offer. We're aiming to bring OR procedures bedside. Right now, we've just focused on a very small piece of that pie, EVDs. By going to a niche market, that allows us to penetrate more readily, create proof of concept, and improve upon our tech before expanding to other procedures. And what are these other procedures? There's at least five other blind procedures on the market, and they're huge and just waiting for a surgeon MR. They consist of lumbar punctures, dental procedures, central and arterial lines, and cardiac electrophysiology. That's all a $3.8 billion industry, and that's just the United States. Just like most things in our world today, the integration of technology to improve our lives and make it easier is inevitable. In healthcare, it's no exception. The future of surgery is mixed reality. Since 2019, there has been a rise in the use of both hardware and software in healthcare, with an expected growth rate of almost 49%. As we saw, mixed reality in healthcare is the future. So as you can imagine, there are already some companies in the space already, but where Surgeon MR stands out, within its application and its accuracy. Surgeon MR is currently the only tool out there that's slated for bedside procedures, integrates seamlessly with the existing ecosystem and workflow, is portable, and with our patent pending technology, three of them to be exact, provides the highest alignment accuracy. And what are those patents? Well, one is an augmented reality-based portable navigation system. Our second is on an alignment accuracy using 3D virtual scene and a 3D world, real world for head mounted display. And our third patent is on creating a smart assessment tool for neurosurgical training and evaluation. Our go-to market strategy will be on to two different phases. We're currently in phase one, working on FDA pre-submission. By the end of phase one, we aim to have raised funds to start our IRB approved cadaver study. And phase two is all about filing and getting that FDA clearance with the goal of entering the market in December, 2022. Our team consists of our clinical lead, Dr. Essan Azimi professor in computer science at Johns Hopkins with over 10 years of experience in augmented reality. Business lead, Dr. Shreya Bise, an ER physician who's currently learn, earning her MBA from Carrier Business School. Design lead, Monica No, a tech accelerator alum who has over nine years experience in software development and design and earning her master's in applied health informatics from Hopkins. And me, Olmush Kamali, serving as a tech lead. I earned my PhD in electrical engineering from Johns Hopkins with experience in computational brain modeling and I'm now a presidential fellow. In addition to our team, we have a top-notch advisory board consisting of neurosurgeons from Johns Hopkins and Washington University, as well as professors in computer science with over 30 years of experience in computer-assisted surgery and human-computer interaction. We are currently seeking strategic partnerships, working on our pilot cadaver study, and a $500,000 investment to help us build our team as we work on hardware integration, software development, and FDA approval. When it comes to your health, this is no game. Help us take the guesswork out of procedures. Join us as we revolutionize surgery. Thank you. Thanks so much, team. Surgeon MR, I got it right. Um, so that was wonderful. And we'll bring on our uh, judges for the final round of feedback. Uh, we'll start with Dr. Glassifer, then go to Neil, Eileen, and wrap up with Dr. Hasselfeld. Great, thanks. Um, uh, so first of all, uh, I love AR VR solutions. Uh, oddly, I, when I ran a center for innovation and community, uh, suburban health system, we did a lot of work in that regard, actually with some of the competitors that even listed. So I really, really like the solution. Uh, and I will say outstanding pitch as you were going, I was writing down, um, specific questions you know, and feedback points that I was going to give, and you hit them. So you covered competitors, 
Uh, one of the things when you showed me the team, I was like, oh, they don't have a neurosurgeon. But then you covered it in the advisory board um, because you want to make sure, you know, if you're pitching to neurosurgeons, you have people that can speak the language, you know. And again, as like someone that works in the ER, they don't, don't want to hear from me. So um, I think the other the other approach I'll say that's really good having, uh, you know, had difficulty in navigating these types of use cases in provider systems. I think another excellent approach is choosing a very specific procedure. Uh, so, you know, because that is, because this is actually kind of my feedback point as well. It's very difficult navigating uh, with clinical leadership and implementing uh, AR VR solutions. So I am a huge fan, but a lot of health systems there or and providers, they're not quite there yet. Like they don't, they haven't wrapped their heads around it. They're afraid of it. Uh, but I think, you know, you've mitigated for that as much as you can by choosing specifically that area. So you can focus on a target segment and try to get some traction there and, and you know, show other, you know, departments, specialties, procedures, you know, why this technology is a benefit. So. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, great presentation, really fascinating opportunity. Uh, I love how you started it out with kind of a fun, cute example. <laughs> I'm kind of a fan of that personally. Some people aren't, I am. And, but you segued really quickly from the fun part to the serious part, which I thought was quite, quite effective. Um, you brought your, your, your customer discovery work in really fast. You brought in your accuracy, you brought in your savings, all that stuff was up front, which really cemented the value proposition well for me. Um, this is always gonna be a challenge, right? You're, it's kind of a platform technology. Um, my initial reaction, um, not unlike Adam's uh, comment, was that this target market is very small. Yes. But you quickly showed me that there were other uh, use cases that were much larger, and you explained why you were attacking this target market first. So that immediately, my question went away, you answered effectively, and did a nice job there. Uh, the timeline had great detail, which I really appreciated and would probably go back to that if I had this presentation as a hard copy and, and, and give that some more study. Um, my last comment though, observation would be, you're probably more likely to fund that half a million dollars through grants than you are mm -hmm. through investment. So I would think through your funding strategy and the likely source of funds at this stage of development. But great, great job, thanks a lot. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Great presentation. Um, uh, I think you know powerful um, uh, when the experts in the field uh, comment that you know this is what I would prefer. That you know the quotations from the neurosurgical leads um, calling out that would not do this without um, uh, assistance and guidance in the future. I think is extremely emotionally powerful. Um, I think in you know, the presentation is overall all great. Um, I would call out a few areas to expand on the value proposition um, uh, and then some of the risks or liabilities associated with the space that you're starting in. Um, uh, I think uh, you're one of the few products that we've seen that is, is focusing really on a high acuity, high complexity space, um, uh, which is fantastic from a, um, a, a lot of potential savings, quality improvements and opportunity there to make real high acuity improvements in our patient population. Um, I think drilling down into some of the specific related complications, lengths of stay and or re-procedure costs would always be helpful given you're targeting a very narrow market um, to be able to make it more tangible about that, what that means from a cost and value standpoint. But I think also acknowledging that the higher the acuity and higher the complexity of the, in, of the clinical disease that's being intervened upon, I, I think the higher the bar for understanding what are the balancing risks and liabilities. And so calling out um, how you may address what happens if a neurosurgical procedure that relies on our product mm -hmm. goes wrong today, mm -hmm. that, is, that risk is contained in the procedure list, but now it may be contained elsewhere. So I think from a balancing point, I'd, I'd like to hear how that risk may be addressed in the future. Um, uh, and then on the addressable market piece, um, uh, agree that there's a huge addressable market here, but not all those procedures, right, come with cross-sectional imaging that can be easily right. mapped, especially lumbar puncture and arterial line. And so thinking about how you may apply the concept to areas where additional cross-sectional imaging is not as easily 
um, available or always available um, uh, and the scalability of that would be helpful to at least know as a clinician watching this. Great, great feedback, thank you. Great presentation. I, I thought you did a really wonderful job. And I, there were a couple things that I really liked. Um, I, I, while you, you had a cute intro, that was really interesting. But what I liked was that you really clearly showed how you're applying um, mixed reality to solving this problem. It was really well um, designed and you could really see how the solution worked together, which I thought was really powerful. Um, I, I shared um, some of the earlier comments that you were presenting a niche market, and I understand why you were. I actually would recommend, if you're going for investors, that you would be pulling the, plat the concept of a platform technology with an, an, a targeted entry point much um, earlier in the presentation, because in my mind, I kept saying, but how big is that market? How big is that? <laughs> and I, so I think, uh, you know, for, it depends who your stakeholder is, but for people you're pitching to for investment, I think take that off the table much earlier because um, it seemed like that was um, too much of a question for too long. Um, I thought that, um, uh, it was help, It would have been helpful to have a little bit more about the economics. You mentioned that there were several different pathways to revenue for the company. Mm -hmm. Knowing a bit more about that would be really helpful. Um, and on the pathway for FDA approval, um, I'm not as familiar with the application of this technology and how, how much it's been developed through the FDA process and obviously commercial reimbursement. So having some information or framework around that, um, you know, being really out there on innovation is wonderful, but sometimes you hit, hit those regulatory um, uh, brick walls because they just don't know what to do with you. Um, I, I, it sounds like that you feel like you have, um, you know, an efficient pathway but understanding more about that, I think would, again, take questions off the table for people who are looking to invest. Makes sense. Thank you so much. Thank you.